Good morning, it's me, Aubrey Graham, with the goat helmet on. Shortly after the release of 1.18, I dropped a video going over the changes in the update. You might have seen it. That video does a pretty good job of going over pretty much everything in the update, except biomes. There were a lot of biome changes in the update. If you caught that first video, you might remember a part where I said maybe I'll do a video focused on biomes. Well, today is the day. This video is your comprehensive guide to all of the changes and adjustments made to biomes in the 1.18 update, including the new biomes. I'm going to go over everything you need to know about everything as of 1.18.1. .1. If you enjoy this one, please participate in Destroy Like December by leaving a like, and if you're new, subscribe. If we're going to talk about 1.18 biome changes, it is essential that we talk about terrain. A 1.18 terrain talk to lead into everything. So, uh, 1.18 has been out for a while. Maybe you had the chance to jump into the game and play it. If you had had the chance, uh, or if you haven't and you've just seen videos, then, yeah, you probably notice everything looks different, like, it, entirely. One of the biggest parts about 1.18 is the terrain changes. The terrain system, completely redone. The developers did a top-tier job here with this stuff. It's so good-looking. Everything is way more hilly than before, but there still are flat spaces. Biomes are in different spots. Terrain? Yeah, uh, terrain has just been completely reshaped. You're gonna have to keep that in mind for today's video. Because the terrain system has been completely redone, that's gonna mean every single biome in the game is gonna look a little bit different. Like the forest, for example, that we're coming up on right here. Uh, a forest in 1.17 and below would have never looked like this. Personally, I feel that focusing on every single biome in the game in this video right here, all 60 or 70 or however many biomes would be like insanely, insanely boring. So what we're gonna do is focus on the major changes here, but just keep in mind that every biome is gonna generate a little bit differently now because of the new generation system. If you didn't know, Minecraft biomes have temperatures. This temperature system is a little bit of like a like a scale. We have cold biomes, we have warm biomes. So some warm biomes are a little bit more warm, some cold biomes are a little bit more cold. The desert right here, this is a very warm biome. The Badlands biome, also warm. The Savannah biome, it's a pretty warm biome. The Plains biome over there, that's another warm biome, but it's not as warm as these ones. I mean, to be honest, with things like snow and ice in the game, the temperature system is a little bit more obvious. A little bit less obvious is the humidity system. Just like how each biome in the game has its own temperature, each biome in the game also has its own humidity. For example, the swamp. It's a very humid biome. More than ever before, these different temperature and humidity values come into play when your world is being generated. So over here, this is a really good example of it. We have the desert, a very warm and dry biome. Badlands, also very warm and dry. Savannah, also very warm and dry. Now you know, Minecraft biome placement is strange, it doesn't always work out. You will still be able to find random biomes placed in really strange spots, but it should be a little bit better now. If you've made a lot of worlds, played the game for a while, it's something you definitely have experienced before. A good example would be something like a desert next to a frozen ocean. Doesn't exactly make a lot of sense. Now, it should be a little bit better. Over here, we have a warm ocean. I think that's a lukewarm. And then this is just a beach biome right in here. All of this stuff kind of blends together. It makes sense next to each other. 1.18 has made a lot of aesthetic changes to terrain and biomes, but it also has made some more technical ones too. Like the temperature and humidity thing. Over here, looking around, we have even more generation that makes sense. The plains biome turns into a forest, turns into a jungle. All of these places are a little bit more warm. Not a single block of snow in sight. This is going to mean, at least from my experience with 1.18 so far, that certain biomes seem to be a little bit more common than they were before. Like the Badlands, I'm having a lot more luck finding Badlands biomes. And the jungle, I'm finding way more jungles than I ever did before. It's not perfect though. It could definitely still be pretty weird. On Java, 1.18 adds a brand new line to the debug screen. The line is going to be right here. Multi-noise line. We have a C value, an E value, a T value, an H value, and a W value. Now, the C value is going to be continentalness, E is erosion, T is temperature, H is humidity, W is weirdness. For the most part, all of these things are really, really straightforward. Continentalness, the first value. So continentalness has to do with how far inland you are. If I were to check this F3 screen and keep your eyes on this spot right here, right now we have a C value of 0.293. This way is inland. There's no water over here. If I keep going this way, the continentalness value will go up. Basically, the further you are away from a big body of water, the higher the continentalness value is. Next up in this new line, we have E. E stands for erosion. Erosion basically tells us how flat or hilly something is. The higher the value, the flatter it should be. So right here, we're in a mountain. It's uh, whatever value it is right here. And then if we were to move down here, the value is going to change. There's a correlation to the shaping of the land. Next up, T is temperature, H is humidity. These two values have no effect at all on the actual shaping of the terrain. The only thing that these two values have an effect on is what biomes are where, what we just talked about. Finally for this line, W, weirdness. The name doesn't lie, this is the weirdest one. The weirdness indirectly drives the PV noise and determines which biome variant gets placed. So right now it's 0 .009. If I were to move over here, it's going to go down into the negative range. It's getting a little bit more insane. I think maybe that has to do with it, but... Uh, to be honest, uh, weirdness is weird. <laughs> it's the one I understand the least. Essentially, what this all boils down to, though, is there's more information inside of the debug screen as to how your world actually came together. 
Next up, we have removed biomes, which is a little bit of a lie, to be honest. So check out this list right here. 26 biomes allegedly removed in 1.18. This is from the Minecraft wiki. However, if we take a look at these biomes that are removed, like desert hills, desert lakes, jungle hills, things like that, they're actually still here. Like, look at this right here. This thing is insanely, insanely hilly. Yeah, that, that's a hill inside of a jungle, jungle hills. The thing about these removed and quotes around the removed biomes are they're not actually removed, at least 25 of them. 1.18's biome system is a little bit different. And basically because terrain can get a little bit more hilly now, sub biomes have essentially been removed. If a forest gets hilly, it doesn't become a hilly forest. It's all just a forest. It actually makes a little bit more sense in my opinion. And I really like this change. So for example, right at the top of that list, Birch Forest Hills, a removed biome. However, 1.18 right now inside of this world that's a birch forest, and that's a hill for sure. It definitely still exists. So 25 of those biomes have not been removed. There has been one biome removal that is actually removed. That's going to be the Deep War Motion. The Deep War Motion biome is a biome that is actually gone, except it's not gone because it was never here. The Deep War Motions would never generate pre-1.18, and now in 1.18 with a removal, they will also never generate. Deep War Motion is technically gone, but other than that one, all of those other biomes on this list right here, they're still in the game. They've all just been condensed into their main version of that biome. So Jungle Hills, it's all just a jungle. Because of the biome condensing that's gone on in 1.18, some biomes that have structures tied to them are going to be a little bit different. For example, the desert. All deserts are now eligible to have village and desert pyramid generation. Pre-1.18, desert hills, desert lakes, yeah, those things couldn't happen. All swamp biomes are now eligible for swamp pot generation. All taiga biomes are now eligible for village and outpost generation. And all snowy taigas are now eligible for igloo generation. If you have an older world that was created pre-1.18 and you have one of those biome variants like snowy taiga hills, in 1.18 if you load that world up, the snowy taiga hills has just become the snowy taiga. You know what they say, nothing is a coincidence, right? So this B in the word biomes that I built right here kind of looks like an 8. In 1.18, there is also an 8. In 1.18, there are 8 new biomes. Let's talk about them. Before we talk about the new biomes, let's talk about the new mountains though. So the new mountains are really, really great. They're very, very cool. The new mountains are also made up of six sub biomes. So usually if mountain generation works correctly, some of the biomes will be near the bottom of the mountain. Some of them will be near the top. Basically, uh, for example, the frozen peaks biome. Yeah, it's a peak biome, so it should be near the top of the mountain. On the other hand, the meadow biome, this place right here for the most part, is not a peak. So it should be near the bottom of the mountain. So, the meadow. This biome is a really, really peaceful biome. I like it. A big characteristic of this biome, the pale green grass color and the flowers all over the place. You can also find villages generating inside of this biome. They're just going to be the plains village, which is a little bit strange, but it's fine. There are villagers here. The flowers that you will be able to find generating inside of the meadows biome are the allium, the oxide daisy, the poppy, the cornflower, the azure bluette, and the dandelion. Birch and oak trees can also generate inside of this biome as well, a little bit more rarely, but when they do, they will always have a bee nest on them. It's pretty cool. The birch trees are also usually pretty tall. The only animals that will spawn inside of this biome, other than the bees with the bee nests, are the sheep, the rabbit, and the donkey. The water color inside of this biome is a deep blue, and outposts can generate here too. That's basically it for the meadow though. Next biome that we're going to take a look at is the grove biome. And just like where you'd find it on a tier list, you'll find the grove biome generating near the bottom of the mountain. This is the grove biome right here. Very revolutionary if I do say so myself. We have the taiga trees, we have the snow, we have snow on the ground. I mean, that's a little different, but yeah, pretty um, mind-blowing. Never seen this stuff before. Uh, okay, okay, there is actually something different about the grove biome. Sometimes, inside of the grove biome, you'll be able to find powder snow on the ground, which can be a little bit different when you're traveling around, so you're gonna have to watch out for that, but yeah, uh, other than that, this is basically like snowy taiga biome, <laughs> but put it on the mountain. I guess another good thing about the grove biome is it's, it's practically a zoo. You can find so many animals spawning here, so you'll be able to find cows spawning here, chickens, pigs, sheep, foxes, and there'll be the snow foxes, wolves, and rabbits inside of this biome. It's a lot of different types of animals. Taiga trees here, the water looks like this, and outposts can generate here too. That's the grove. Next biome, snowy slopes. This is the snowy slopes biome right here. I really like the snowy slopes biome. I think it looks nice. Snow, big characteristic of the snowy slopes biome, snow all over the place. The only mobs that can spawn here, the goat and the rabbit. The snowy slopes biome also has powder snow inside of it, and from my experience, the powder snow starts to get a little bit deeper sometimes, not always, but yeah, the powder snow being a little bit deeper in this biome can definitely make it a little bit more dangerous. The snowy slopes biome should be found a little bit higher up on the mountain than the meadow biome. So down here we have a meadow, then we have the snowy slopes, and then we have a peak biome. But for now, we're just worried about this. The structures that you might be able to find inside of this biome, there are actually two. The outpost, which is fine. The, the outpost could be found generating here. And actually the igloo too. I like that they included the igloo in this biome. Watercolor is this. 
So over here on this mountain, this is all the snowy slopes bottom, including this area right here where the stone is exposed. This is still the snowy slopes. If we keep going up this, we're going to make it to the first peak bottom that we're going to talk about, the Jagged Peaks bottom. This is the Jagged Peaks right here. It's one of the three peak bottoms that can generate. Jagged Peaks, lots of snow, lots of stone. No more powder snow in the Jagged Peaks bottom because it's a peak biome. And goats. Only goats will be able to spawn inside of the Jagged Peaks biome. Structures that you'll be able to find inside of the Jagged Peaks, only the outpost. I don't know, there's something about this combo right here where you have the meadow that goes into the snowy slopes, really, really like that, and then it goes into the jagged peaks, like, it all just blends so flawlessly, I think it looks really, really nice, and then, actually, look at this, here the grove is coming in, kind of ruining the mountain with the dirt, very cool grove, very nice, that's cool, jagged peaks though, I really, really like the jagged peaks biome, however, there are better peak biomes, like this place right here, the frozen peaks biome has ice all over the thing, and I mean, how can you not love this thing, like, look at how good it looks, with the ice up there, the, the peaks and everything, it just looks so good. The watercolor inside of the Frozen Peaks bomb is going to be that color right there. Very, very blue. Structures inside of the Frozen Peaks, outposts again. Mobs inside of the Frozen Peaks, goats again. The blocks that will make up this biome are snow, packed ice, and stone. Packed ice is the big one. You can get a lot of packed ice from this place if you need packed ice. However, why would you destroy this place? Like, if you do that, you're, a, you're practically a monster. This stuff is amazing. Amazing for base building, like I'm doing in my survival series, or even just like a base backdrop. The stuff looks so good. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, the watercolor inside of the Jagged Peaks biome is that right there. Now this area inside of this seed is like kind of perfect. We have basically every single mountain biome in here. We have a meadow, we have a grove, snowy slopes, Jagged Peaks, Frozen Peaks over there. The one that we're missing is the Stony Peaks. So remember when I was talking about that whole temperature, humidity stuff? Well yeah, all of these mountain biomes are a little bit more cold. The Stony Peaks biome, that's a warm mountain biome. Which means, if you're looking for the Stony Peaks biome, then you're going to want to start by looking near biomes that are warm. So, like the jungle, the plains, those are a little bit more warm. This is the Stony Peaks biome right here, a small one. The big thing about the Stony Peaks biome is the calcite. You can find calcite generating in large patches here. Really, really great for building. Whoa, that's like insane. That's not a Stony Peaks, but that is like really, really insane. That's so cool. What kind of mobs will you be able to find spawning in the Stony Peaks biome? Well actually nothing no animals will spawn inside of the stony peaks biome inside of the stony peaks biome you'll be able to find outposts though so that's a thing but calcite the calcite is so nice and if the stony peaks biome gets like really steep the stone cutting into the air looks really really cool too water stony peaks that is the water inside of the stony peaks uh basically like all the water colors are essentially the same other than the meadow biome so six of the new biomes in 1.18 make up the mountains the other two biomes are going to be able to be found under the ground. Cave biome number one, the Dripstone Caves biome. So just like the name says, Dripstone. Dripstone is a big part of the Dripstone Caves biome. All over the ceiling, the floor inside of the Dripstone Caves biome, you'll be able to find pointed Dripstone. You'll also find a lot of Dripstone blocks on the ceiling, on the floor, and sometimes in between. You'll find these really, really cool pillars that generate going all the way up, or sometimes part of the way up, kind of like that right there. It's cool. If you are looking for copper, the Dripstone Caves Biome is a really good place to go because copper generates a little bit more commonly inside of the Dripstone Caves Biome. Inside of the Dripstone Caves Biome, if you have an aquifer, then Drown will be able to spawn. When you get a Dripstone Cave Biome that kind of looks like this right here with like all of the teeth, it looks so, so cool. Like it literally looks like a mouth or something. Like it's insane. Dripstone Caves is great, really. However, Lush Caves, even better. So this is what the place looks like with night vision. Without night vision, the glow inside of this biome, like from the glow berries all over the ceiling, spore blossoms here, moss blocks, tons and tons of cave plants. It just looks so, so good. Like all of the glowing, uh, amazing. Like who would have thought that this would ever actually be vanilla Minecraft generation? Like, I don't know. It's just something about this place. Like the glowing on the ceiling, all of the plants inside of the cave. It's just unreal. It feels completely unnatural. Also, the cave biome uh, kind of feels a little flipped sometimes. Like you have all of the light on the ceiling. Floor is really, really dark. At least if it's tall. This biome has a lot to it though. There are plants all over this biome on the ground. There are plants on the ceiling. There are plants like literally everywhere. Also clay inside of this biome. Really, really good spot for finding clay. And axolotls. This is the only spot that axolotls can spawn in 1.18. This biome. Now getting them to spawn in this biome is relatively easy. You just need water. There's no uh, like weird spawn conditions or anything like that. Just big puddle of water and axolotls can spawn. But look at this place. <laughs> it's just so amazing. Like, I could stand in this biome and just look at it, like, forever. Like, and I've seen this place so much at this point. I don't think this place will ever not amaze me. Also, because of the new generation, sometimes you can find the caves, like, peeking out onto the surface. And look what happens when you get a lush cave, like, peeking out onto the surface. Next to a jungle right here, we have the lush cave, like, spilling out. These are the coordinates if you're looking for it. But jungle, lush cave right there kind of leads in like that. And then down there, you can see the light from the lush caves. That is so cool. 
Oh yeah, and uh, there's one more thing that can happen with the Lush Caves bomb. It doesn't happen every single time, but sometimes you can find those strange-looking oak trees generating on the surface uh, with the azalea leaves, pretty cool leaves. And uh, if you dig straight down from them, it will always lead you to the Lush Caves. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Aha! Aha, there it is, right down there. So we have the strange oak tree with the azalea leaves right here. Uh, we dig straight down from this spot, uh, or if we were to, we would eventually land inside of the Lush Caves. So all the way down here, boom, Lush Caves. Or if we keep going straight down, if you don't want to count that, eventually even further, again, Lush Caves. Straight down from the oak tree is the Lush Cave, and apparently, a Dripstone Cave too. <laughs> That's so cool. New biomes in 1.18, there we go. That's it. However, if you're playing 1.18 and you pay attention to the biome names, you might have noticed some things that are a little bit different, like uh, this spot right here. In 1.18, there are 11 biome renames. So this spot right here, the old growth birch forest, used to be the tall birch forest. Basically tall birch trees, like those ones. Two more new biome names that involve the words old and growth. The old growth pine taiga, that spot right there, and the old growth spruce taiga, this spot over here. The spruce taiga has the leaves all over the place, the pine taiga has the leaves at the top of the trees. They're very similar looking though. Oh no, can we get at least an F in the comments for the snowy tundra community? This is not good, I warn you, the snowy tundra community is dying out. That's because it's now called the snowy plains. Do you remember the jungle edge biome? Well, this is it now. Feel old yet? It's called the sparse jungle. Stone shore biome became stony shore. We have four new windswept biome names in 1.18. The first one is the old mountains biome. Compared to the new mountains, the old mountains are literally just hills, so windswept hills. Next up, we have windswept hills, which is basically when the forest uh, starts to get like a little more crazy, like over here, this is getting crazy. Previously, this place was called the wooded mountains, and now it's windswept forest. Before 1.18, this was called the gravelly mountains. Now it's the windswept gravelly mountains getting fancy. Out of all of the biome renames, I feel like this one was kind of maybe the biggest one because the name was kind of iconic and I, I just loved it. Shattered Savannah. It's now the Windswept Savannah, which is cool sounding for sure. It is a little bit different for sure, but yeah, Shattered Savannah, Windswept Savannah. They're the same thing. And finally, last but not least for not only the renamed biomes, but I think actually the entire video is Wooded Badlands Plateau. It's the part of the Badlands where you can find the core cord and the oak trees. Well, the biome is now called the Wooded Badlands. It lost the plateau part. And so, when it comes to biomes, 1.18, new biomes, renamed biomes, lost biomes, that's it. That's everything to know. I hope you enjoyed this one. If by chance you haven't caught my comprehensive 1.18 breakdown, now is the perfect time to check that out. It'll be on the end card. Also, recently started a brand new survival series. It's really, really fun. Playing with this new 1.18 terrain is like top tier stuff. It's really, really amazing. Check that out as well. Huge, huge thank you to my patrons, Lord Zenera, Hushsound34, and Reitman. I appreciate the support. If you enjoyed the video, remember it's Destroy Like December. Subscribe if you're new here. It's been me, your boy. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.